Hallelujah. Confidence, boldness, assurance. When you begin to move in confidence and boldness and assurance, you can begin to move in faith. It'll be about God, not about you. Father, Father wants us to, Father's just interested in, in having us assure our hearts before him tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You, you can be seated. Listen, we want you to take your place in the kingdom of God. And you know, it's such a blessing to me to have musicians here. And they are very apparent to people, really, in terms of taking their place in God because of the benefit of having folks who know how to strike a chord and sing a song and lead us in praise. I don't want to just sing any song. It doesn't really even matter to me so much the words. It just, it's really the heart. I just want to know that, you know, that I'm worshiping Him. I want to be caught away with Him. I want to be caught away with the words. And Father wants you to take your place. He's got a place and a position for you tonight. He wants you to be able to understand how that he would cause you to participate in exhorting and comforting. You know, God's people, the Lord didn't call God's people get up and take the microphone and start correcting everybody. You don't have that authority. Huh? So it won't work for you. And so as soon as you start doing it, we already know you're wrong. I don't care how much you think you're anointed. Huh? Then we won't be scared to give you the mic because we figure we're going to, you know, it's going to be a serious chastisement from another sheep. The Lord didn't do that. He didn't, he didn't create, he, he made pastors to sort, sort that out. Hallelujah. You just got to know who you are and have confidence and boldness about who you are in God. You're a child of the Almighty. The Spirit of the Son is going to be inside of you. The Holy Ghost comes to fill you, fill you. And He wants to use you. He wants to use you to bring healing to people. Isn't that great? He wants to bring, use you to lay your hands on the sick, bring healing to them physically yeah. and spiritually. He don't want you to make a Job's comforter out of you. Get you up here and start pointing out that blemish on everybody. Huh? And why you in the state you in? Hey, Jesus, help us. <laughs> Let Father come do that. And he will. He wants you to find your place. Hallelujah. He wants you to understand how to interpret tongues. Has an interpretation to it. It's not just a word of prayer. It's not just a word of praise. It is a word of expression. Has something that you can hear in the realms of the spirit. Ha ha ha. Should activate something on the inside of you. It would cause you to begin to move under the power of the living God. You know who Jesus is? He's a river to the thirsty. And he's not just any kind of river. He's the river of God's life and expression to the thirsty. Is that radical or what? <laughs> you know what the Holy Spirit is here to do tonight? To reveal and manifest the glory of the person, Jesus Christ, in you. He, he's here to fill your mouth with laughter and your heart with singing. <laughs> your tongue with singing. Ah, that gladness should be upon your countenance. Ooh, Rabba Fateo. That the power and the authority of God would be realized. I mean, when you are caught up in your problems, are caught up in other people's problems. You can never move in faith. You can never move in boldness. You can never move in confidence. When your heart is entangled and ensnared with sin and disobedience, you can never have confidence towards God. Not on the level where you can look at someone who's sick and say, be healed. Where you can look at someone diseased and say, be cleansed. 
where you can look at someone tormented and afflicted and give them this wonderful life that Christ Jesus has given to us. So tonight, just let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you. Uh, let the Holy Spirit begin to speak to you. Let the labo serene, let the rivers of living water begin to issue forth from you. Let the presence of the living God overshadow you. Just begin to yield your members to him. Yeah. Yeah. Just begin to yield yourself unto the one who loves you so. Abramon bevete. Abramon de befeteas. Abramon bedefe di salocate. Thank you, Jesus. O Raman balesea lo monga levita la maya sea. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. I'm the darling of his heart. The jewel in his crown, he leadeth me. We're the darling of his heart. It's a wonderful, awesome thing when you begin to understand how important you are to the Father. A response of faith begins to happen in our life rather than a constant, seemingly nagging thought that somehow he doesn't like us or we're not acceptable to him or he's far, far away. That's the trick that Satan plays. Father is constant pursuit of us as long as you have breath in your being. The Holy Spirit is in pursuit of you. He wants, his, his, his desire is to come and rescue us from every evil and wicked thing, from every mountain of hindrance. Oh God, that you would rend the heaven, the prophet said, and that you would come down and at your presence the mountains would melt. For he has rent the heavens and he has come down and his presence does melt away every mountain. It's no problem to say mountain be removed and cast in the sea when his presence is there because he is, it's his glory. You know, I, I, love, I, I love it. I mean, I remember the first time that I received an email and somebody asked me to pray for them in an email. And I said in the email, be healed in Jesus' name. They emailed me right back, said I just got healed. <laughs> to watch the power of God work through the email. I remember first time that we saw a miracle take place through text you listen to me right now i command it you know huh it came through like that in the text you listen to me too right you listen to me right now i command in the name of jesus be made whole hallelujah it works through text hallelujah remember the first time that i was talking on the telephone and was praying for somebody as I was praying for them, they begin to shout on the other end and rejoice on the other end because that which held them in prison and pain and sickness, whatever it was, they were set free. Because, you know, the power of God travels. Ha, huh, the voice of the Lord. That comes out of a realm of relationship with him that just, it gives you confidence. No, nobody gave me confidence in God. God gave me confidence in God. My just walking it out with him resulted in my boldness and my assurance. Nobody came along and produced my boldness. <laughs> Nobody except for the Holy Ghost, that is. Ha, <laughs> Tonight, uh, we... Going to, we're going to have communion and we're going to just, we're going to have a witness and a testimony and a, and a participation with the reality that he's in us and that we live by him 
that we live by his blood. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that his blood's not cleansing. You can't tell me that his blood's not healing. God, God came as the champion for man and he lived so blamelessly, so perfectly, so sinlessly, so obediently. And then offered himself at Calvary and doing so became the only one worthy to have power and ability to forgive man, to expunge his sin, to end all Adam's consequence upon our head. A faith that was once delivered unto the saints to liberate us that we no longer have to in any way come under the influence of demon power. We no longer have to come under the influence of sickness and disease. We no longer have to live in an uncertainty of whether we are going to spend eternity with God or in a place called hell because we've been begotten of them because he is worthy to take and wash away our sins, to loose every pain of death, to open up the scroll of God's divine gifting in life, to, out, to roll out the plan, in other words, that somehow Satan tried to prevent. Through his sin and iniquity, Father rolls it out. The plan of the ages and written therein are our names and assignments, our heritage, that which will be divided by lot unto each one according to the deeds done in his body. And, and beyond all that we can even talk about right now, we just find, try to, we grasp for words to express what God has purposed for us to do and to possess in our latter end. There are a lot of things along the way. There's fame, there's, there's fortunes, there's distractions, there's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. There's the pride of life, which takes out so many people, especially religious people. The pride of life probably works more among religious people than it does in the world, I think. Or at least it's equal. There's all these cares of this life, earthly interest, all these things trying to run interference with their life. But suddenly, if we allow God to touch us with this wisdom that he's given, I mean, if we allow that which he has appointed unto us to become valuable, it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It has been given unto us to understand what holy men of old sought to know and could not. It's been given unto us to step into a realm of immeasurable divine power and glory and begin to shine with the same authority that Jesus Christ now shines with because we in him and he's in us. I want you to open your Bibles to Romans 8, 12. I'll just tell you right now, you'll be able to hear this on the measure of what you've surrendered to God. You will only be able to hear and receive this on the measure of that, of what you surrender to God. Hallelujah. I'm the Bacchilea Priya. I say it again. You will only be able to hear and understand this based upon your submission and surrender to God. To those who have, more shall be given. And, but I'm going to tell you right now, God gave to Israel. He gave to them a measure of the kingdom. He gave to them one portion of wealth. And they set it aside. And they did not become the passion of their life. Ultimately to the point, the Lord said, see, you should not see, hear, you should not uh, understand that you should believe and be converted because of their continuous, persistent sin and iniquity. They didn't want to get it right. They constantly made excuses to be wrong instead of having a desperate plea to be right. The Father here tonight he wants to move among us with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. But he gives something to us to be faithful in. And if we're faithful in it, he'll give more to us. And 
You know, we will want to be able to know and see and understand all these things in God. You'll know and see and understand only in proportion to how obedient you are. The increase in the manifest presence of God is directly proportional to your consecration to Him. The more you give yourself to the manifest presence of the Holy Ghost, the greater and the stronger the manifest presence of the Holy Ghost will be in your life. And it's just that simple. The more you have affinity to the world and you think you're looking for excuses to run around in the things of the world, the further you're going to be from His manifest presence. You're practicing the opposite thing. You're practicing not having the manifest presence. Father's called us to come into a place with him. Father's called us to come into a place with him. Some people think, well, my goodness, you know, that must be so hard. How do you get there? It must be so hard. It's too high. I can't get over it. Too low, can't get under it. How can I step into all this fullness of God's glory that he's always talking about in his word? Cease from your own works. Get out of the way. Stop. Stand still. Stand up with a with a voice and a sound of heaven that can only come into your life and be in your life because of a persuasion, because of a consecration. A persuasion will produce a persistence in your life. <laughs> you become persuaded about something. Faith will produce faithfulness. You say, I have faith. Well, let me see it. Faith will produce faithfulness. An unending, it doesn't matter, come hell or high water, it does not matter. If it's a snow drift, 15 foot deep, I'm going to be there. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Every great miracle took place and manifested in people's life because they were not willing to turn back. You think the folks would have walked across the water in, in Indonesia? If they were willing to be turned back, well, it's just to the storm's too big. I mean, we really wanted to go to the meeting tonight, and it was going to be a wonderful thing, but, you know, the storm's just too big. Look, I mean, it would be impossible. Some of us are going to get killed if we go over this river. It's flooding. They were, they, were, they were sold out. So the great Indonesian revival, like a mighty wind, was only happened because there were people who were persistent who would not be stopped for nothing. Nothing. Don't care. Nothing stopping us. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. You'd be all wrapped around your own emotions. Got to call a God upon your life, an anointing of God upon your life, and you don't want to grow up. You want to be a little, you know, baby, emotionally. I was going to say brat, but I thought I'd just let off a little bit. <laughs> but that's probably most described that way. Uh -huh. It just, you know, the reality of it is when you know him, when you, begin to, when you begin to see him, when you begin to evaluate the love that he has for you, it becomes immeasurable. All you can do is say, what am I that you're mindful of me? Or what am I, the son of man, that you visit me? Oh, God, your love, it passes knowledge. It goes beyond anything that we could even begin to think, this love of Christ. In that, my goodness, there is a different, there is a different attitude. There's a different action of our life. It's that response that the Lord is looking for. People just, I was so blessed tonight watching you react to an interaction with God. You reacting to an action. I want, to re all, I want all my praise and all my prayer and all that I do and everything that's going on in my life to be a reaction to his action. And that begins by my, my obedience to God. I don't care what it takes, I'll be there. I'm not going to abdicate my opportunity. I've watched many people. I remember this guy, 
that I met, um, the first time I met him, I must have been 14 years old. The guy had such an amazing anointing upon his life. I mean, I believe that, I believe that he could have been, I mean, the Lord would have, there would have, there would have been nothing. He was at a place in God. Maybe you could say that God gave him five measures of wealth. He was at a place and an anointing that he could have become one of the most famous ministers in the world. He didn't know how to be faithful. He was on again, off again, Flanagan. He was up and down. Good one day, bad the other day. Huh? People, Father's looking for us to find a walk with him. It doesn't matter what goes down. It doesn't matter what happens. We're going to do what he's called us to do and treasure the ability that he's given to us. Every day that you spend your life on yourself, you lose out on the ministry opportunity that God has for you. You can't change anything about yesterday, but you can begin to make a decision about today. You don't have to live under the disadvantages of the past. You don't have to live under some kind of condemnation in the past. There's nobody gonna hold you to your past. When God's calling you to the present, God's calling you to a, what's really important is your future in God. It really doesn't matter anything that up to this point that I've really done for the Lord. It doesn't really even matter. All that would be is for just reason is for me to stand back and just encourage myself and the Lord, look, God's already done it once, he'll do it again. But really, if I just sit back saying about all the stuff that I have done, I'm a have done. I'm a has done. I'm a ha I'm, you know, I'm a has been. That's backslidden. Talk about things you did. What are you doing? What are you doing? Praise God for the people that are doing. Praise God for the people that are faithful in the ministry of the church. Praise God for those who turn on the sound system, who work with the cameras, who get the YouTubes out. I mean, we've got literally tens of thousands of people viewing the YouTubes. Praise God. That is the ministry of the body of Christ. We have, we have so many people tuning in on the web, hitting the web. It's just amazing. It's just a wonderful blessing. Praise God for the people who will not hold their own lives dear unto themselves that at their own expense, at the sacrifice of their time. They got families too. They got issues too. They have challenges too. They have mountains too. They have stormy waters too. Everybody does. The difference is some people say, no, we'll not be denied. There's a persistence. There's, an There's been an encounter. There's been an encounter. When you've had an encounter with God, you're different. When you've had an encounter with him, all of a sudden your trust for him, your love for him begins to explode on the inside of you in such a way that there is a confidence and assurance. There is a knowing there is a love, there is a response, there is a consecration that he works in our life. That's likened unto his consecration and his love for us because it's the same love he pours it into us by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. We want you to have an encounter with him. We want you to have a passion for him. We want to bring you to a place that you surrender everything to him so that he can give you all the good things that he wants to give you so that he can fulfill all of the good purposes of Father. Father wants to fulfill all the good pleasure, all his good pleasure, the things that he's purposed for, for you, to do through you, the immeasurable amount of life, the immeasurable amount of grace, the immeasurable amount of the display of his presence in the midst of you with the work of faith and power. It's a consecration. Hallelujah. It's just a surrender. I want you to open your Bibles. Did you already open your Bibles? I, I, I am just, you're going to have to just understand your people. I, I've been getting up every morning at 4.30 in the morning. 
and working till really late at night. And then because I'm in a different place, I mean, I was like maybe sleeping two, three hours a night and I'm just exhausted. But there is a realm of the anointing. Hallelujah. I went home and I sat down in a chair and went into a coma. You know, it's like you, 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 you snoring before your head hits the pillow, you know. <laughs> you know. I'll, I mean, though, we, you know, we, Ann and I, we just made a covenant. We said, listen, we're not going to run the risk. We're not going to run the risk of breathing out our last breath and saying we could have done more. You need to make that decision tonight. I pray I'm not talking to you when you're 81 and you got one more year to live telling you, listen, don't be a prisoner of your past. Your past doesn't matter. It's about what you're going to do now and with the remainder of your life. And finally go, okay. <laughs> Pastor, what can I do? <laughs> Not much, really. Not much. But the Lord loves you so much, he'll take He'll take whatever it is that you're willing to give him. Hallelujah. Don't you let Satan lie to you and tell you that you can't be anything significant in the kingdom. That you don't matter. That you're not important. That the Father can get along without you. Don't you let the Satan tell you that lie. That's his lie. Don't you let him spin his web of earthly, worldly interest that snares you and holds you back from being in this place that he's called us to be in him with an unlimited display of his manifest presence in our life. I want to talk to you tonight about the light of his glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> I need to spend a little time just rejoicing and hallelujah, praising him uh, so I don't fall asleep holding the microphone. <laughs> hallelujah. Kurumangzea. Ha. Lengje rumase. Hallelujah. Panane kesh to pay. Alemonzea tai. Ha kanase toramai. Ha can I make say poverty? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's wonderful when you have a relationship with the Lord. I, I was just around a bunch of people that had infectious diseases, man. I'm telling you right now, strep throat, all kinds of things going on. They had just caught it. And one person was prescribing penicillin for himself because he was a vet, and another person was doing something else. And I'm telling you, they, they were taking it in ridiculous kinds of ways. And the Lord whispered to me, He said, Don't you worry, it can't touch you. Amen. Amen. Because I just went through something took me to another realm of faith. I didn't go through something took me to another realm of fear. I went through something took me to another realm of faith. An uh, relentless authority and God of living immune to every disease and sickness. I want you to get confidence towards God that when you speak, it's on his behalf and he's not let your words fall to the ground. I want you to be able to get inspired all the time, not sometime, any time, not ever, once in a while after you come out of a prayer meeting. Hallelujah. We want you to live in him. We want you to understand his expressions. He, we want you to understand why it's so good to be continually filled up with the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm mm mm. Hallelujah. Halakera se a paya. Hevrene a tilo. Haja berenashi. Hale mangle se perosane. Hale mangalaya. Hallelujah. I was so, my wife had something come up on her, on the side of her face that most people run to the doctor with in fear. Ah! She just said, in the name of Jesus, get off of me in Jesus' name. No fear with the consecration. I went over there, and I kissed it and said, in Jesus' name, you die. Now, hallelujah. Parasaya. Uh, special ministry I have only to one person. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm raised gone. 
people are not going to bend. They're not going to bow to the social pressures. They're not going to bend and they're not going to bow to the demands of sickness and the disease. They're not going to bend. They're not going to bow to their own earthly interests. Paul said, I beat under my body. And I keep it in submission. Lest though I being a preacher of the gospel, having written most of the Bible, should in the end be a castaway. I'm not letting my body tell me I can't go do what God said for me to do. Doesn't matter how many times I've been beaten with stripes. Don't many t matter how many times I've been stoned and left for dead. Don't matter how much I've been abused or how much I've been through. And how many excuses I could have. I'm going to still go ahead and preach all night and go to the next city in the morning. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I love Paul's persistence when the prophets prophesied and said, if you go to Jerusalem, you will be bound. He said, fine. Ha! Hallelujah. And then, you know, the prophet prophesies, declaring what's going to happen to him. Then everybody gets all emotional. Don't go, don't go, don't go. The prophet didn't say don't go. Hello. Prophet didn't say don't go. Oh, don't go, don't go. That the people said don't go. The prophet just declared, this is what's going to happen. He's like, fine. I'm not only willing to be bound, but to die. Come on. Somebody said, what's the secret of getting into this realm? That's the secret to getting into this realm. If there's any secret here, and there isn't, it's been a, it's a my goodness, it's up in, hallelujah. Bright, blood red colors, Hallelujah. There's something that the world must see. It's the light of his glory. Jesus said in verse 12, I am the light of this world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He will have the, light, the kind of the God kind of life that will light up everything. He will have a disposition about him that even though it looks like everybody around him hates him and is not responding to the divine manifestation of the power of God, it looks like chaos. It looks like everything other than a revival. Yet they are so impacted by the light, by the love, by the demeanor of divine glory that they'll never get over it. I don't have any doubt really in my mind that every one of those soldiers that were around the cross that weren't tainted by religion saw the glory of heaven and became prisoners of the Lord Jesus Christ before it was all over. I've been in too many situations where I've had people cursing me, cursing me, slandering me, saying verbally offensive things. And I stood there with a great peace of God upon me. No reaction. Not touched by it. Just stood there. Just looking. Stood there with a great peace, with a great love. Didn't matter. And they might have even thought there was a blank stare. It was just, just the presence of the Lord. And then immediately when they're done, just begin to interact with them as though they were my dear friends. Because the Lord didn't say, treat people as they treat you. He said, treat people the way you want them to treat you so that you may be the children of your Father in heaven. There is a light that should shine, a light of his glory, a light of his character, a light of his presence, a light of his deeds, a light of his doing, a light of his disposition. But it's only possible because we're under the mantle and under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And that's only possible because we've given ourselves over to this relationship that keeps getting deeper. It starts off ankle deep. And I'm tired of seeing the church walking around ankle deep, man. You bunch of scaredy cats. You enjoy, they're all walking around going, but the water is so nice. It's so beautiful out here. This feels good. Well, why don't you guys come on over here and have some fun getting in the deep end? Huh? Dive in that ankle deep water. You can't dive in over there. But over, come over to the deep. You can climb up 30, 40 feet into those big tall pines. And man, it's exciting. Yeah, you're going to start off at five foot and then you're going to get to 10 foot. 
and be there for a while. Then you're going to get to 15 foot, get yourself an adrenaline rush. Huh? And it's going to be scary going to the 15, but you'll get into it. Just hang there with it. Amen. Then you'll move on into the 20 foot. Hey, you're having some fun now. Huh? People looking going, whoa. Man, you crazy doing that. No, we having fun. And it's some fun that you can only have in the deep water. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 Hallelujah. The deep river of his presence. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I love the knee deep. My goodness, I, I think if somebody gets knee deep in the anointing, they become globally famous. Why? Because it's so unique and distinct from everybody else. Somebody got enough relationship with God and have moved on in to the realm or walk with God to far enough. They have moved forward far enough to have a deep, a, a knee deep relationship with the Father wants to us walk around baptized in his glory. Father wants us to go ahead and jump in on the deep end. Hallelujah. Same brood die, say I had some preachers come to me and cancel me, cancel me one time. They, I, I sometimes say cancel, C-A-N-C-E-L, cancel me. Okay, I had some preachers come try to cancel, cancel me. One time said, listen, you know what? Well, you, here's the problem with your ministry. Okay, go ahead, tell me. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm going to try to be in submission. Here's the problem with your ministry. You just go take everybody to the deep end and dive in. The people aren't used to the water. They're scared. They just, you know, they're going to stand on the banks watching you swim around all by yourself, diving down, telling them to jump in, poking fun at them, calling them names on the bank. You need to take people in, just walk them in ankle deep and just let them walk around ankle deep. And then, you know, after a while, then just go ahead and just like move on in, you know, a little bit deeper and just see if they start getting scared, just go ahead and back on up to the ankle deep. I said, well, you know, I don't think I, the, the Lord's going to have to do a new thing in my life. You're going to have to pray earnestly for me and help me and, because I don't have that kind of ministry. I'm sorry. I just, I've always been just go dive into the deep area. Huh? I just, I love the anointing. Somebody said to me one time, they said, you know what your problem is? I'm not kidding you. You know what a preacher said to me? He's honest, I'm telling you. He said, you know what? You promise you just love the anointing too much. I'm, I, 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 I'm telling you. Uh, you just love the anointing. Yes. I do. What else is there? Because the anointing, the anointing, is this wonderful privilege, this manifest presence of the Lord, this wonderful ability to be the sons of God. That's what the anointing is. He's given us anointing that we may know him. He's given us anointing that we may dwell in him. He's given us anointing that we may be taught of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He's given us the privilege and the ability to understand the things of the kingdom. Wow. To, to think about it in the context that many righteous men and many holy men sought earnestly to be able to know these things that we now know. And it was not revealed to them. It's been revealed to us, and, and we just don't know how to really respond. We don't know, really know what to do. Jesus says, if you follow me. He didn't say, if you believe in me. He didn't say, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me, though he walk in darkness, shall have the law, uh, be in darkness, rather, shall have the light of life. Is that what it said? Let's go up there and read that again. Everybody turn there. Please go up there with me quickly. Everybody see that? Let me, let me read it like this. I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me, though he walks in darkness, okay, <clears throat> shall have the light of life. Did you hear that? You hear, the, you hear that? Let me just read it again to you. You ready? You ready? Because I'm trying to put the modern day spin on it. Okay, I'm trying to read into it what we believe it to be. Okay, here we go. Ready? Are you following along with me? You tell me where I'm wrong. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, 
even though he walks in darkness, shall have the light of life. Okay, let me read it again to you because you're not getting. I am the light of the world. He that believeth. That's what I wanted to say, not follow. He that believeth in me. Just say gong. Stop me. Have a riot. When I start preaching it wrong, say wrong. wrong. Well, not now because I ain't doing I ain't saying nothing wrong now. What I'm saying now is right. I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me, though he walk in darkness. Ah! He that walks in darkness and says he knows him is lying. Ah! Father wants to cause us to come over here and walk in his manifest presence. Pull from me. Pull from me, Satan. Pull from me, see proof of the Ikea. See, I want to make Satan an Ikea. Hallelujah. You know what? I just, I'm just telling you right now, just engaging with those things that are coming out to try to stop you. Things have been harassing you. Things have been messing with you. You don't have the, as it were, ability as, to, to resist them. You don't understand what you're up against. Praise God for a shepherd. Amen? Yes. Praise God for people watching over your soul. Praise God for people who are equipped with the anointing. Amen? To yes. move in the authority of heaven so that you can have a safe place to grow and mature Amen. and be Thank equipped. You. Yes. Your own self. To move into things of the spirit. God's call. You listen to me. You don't even begin until you have a consecrated life. You don't even begin until you consecrate your life to him to learn his ways. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about how much you fail, how much you falter. I'm talking about whether or not you're consecrated to learn his ways. You're not making excuses. There's people who make excuses. They make excuses. Hey, you know, it's all right. God says it's okay. We can go out and, and do the hanky-panky. Shake it all about. We go out and whatever, you know. All the things of this world. No, there's people that do it. It's a hyper-grace movement. And they, they can give you a whole verse of Scripture why they can live in sin and be right with God. He, I, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me, though he walk in darkness. No, I am the light of the world. He that follows me. In other words, if I'm going to, if I'm going to walk in a light, life that is going to be a light unto the world. I'm telling you, a smallest little candle, birthday candle light in a, in a dark place is enough light to light up a huge area for people to come and see. Even a small candle. And the Lord tells us over here, let's go look over here. What he calls you and I to go and do. Could you turn this up a little bit? So I'm going to have to put this into my, I'm like having to insert it into mouth. I got an ear thing that keeps falling off. I got a microphone that I must almost chew on. Jesus. That's all right. I mean, you know, we're not poking too much fun at the people running the equipment back there. You know, praise God for the equipment. The equipment has lasted us about 30 years. <laughs> but it's been about 15 years. I mean, you know. It's amazing. This, the Lord gives us this hum, amazing mileage. You know, we've got 350,000 miles on our car. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just amazing. I mean, you know, Ruthie Anna drove her truck so long, those tires, what was it, like 120,000 miles or something? I had to get a sledgehammer and beat the tire off the rim because it was, it was fused to the rim. My man, forgive me. I had to beat the whole tire off the car because it was fused to the hub. It had never been off. The tire had never been changed. He, is, he preserves us. 
He just blesses everything that we have. Hallelujah. But it's about time we update. I just... <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm thinking about other ministries that need this equipment that we have. And, and we were just believing the Lord to see. I'm so excited about what Pastor Kelly's doing. We're going to call him Evangelist Amen. Kelly. Amen. Just, just laying hold on things. And God just said, okay, let's, I'm going to go do it. He says to me, he said, he said uh, Pastor, do you have any problem with me? going out and ministering. And I said, are you kidding me, man? Are you kidding me? Go. Do it. Don't slow up. Don't let up. I just got a call from, uh, an email, rather, from Paulina and Angelo, and they just said, one, there's one door after the other is opening up. And she told me this morning she preached uh, Pastor Ann's sermon, Fastest Draw in the West. <laughs> Being fast to draw on the anointing. Hallelujah. Being fast to draw. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to see you just get so built up in the faith, so confident in the things of the Spirit, that you can, you can go everywhere presenting this wonderful life of Jesus Christ rather than to be presenting yourself. I want you to get out of you. I want you to understand all those self-interests, all those things that mess with you. They're just holding you back. That's right. We want you to recognize how to follow Jesus in the details of your life. How to follow, learn how to follow Jesus in the details of your interactions and the decisions that you're making. Learn how to follow him when everything is coming in on you strong and you just want to blow up and give a person a piece of your mind. Recognize at that moment that may be the last piece that you ever have. Huh. Oh, day. Don't give them a piece of your mind. Give them the peace of the Lord. There is a light that needs to be seen. God didn't light you and I up to hide us under a, the bed, put us under the basket. He lit us up with his presence and of his glory to set us upon the highest place in every place. The highest place in the workplace. The highest place in, the, in every area of society. Look what he did with Daniel. Look what he did with Joseph. Look what, he's, look what he did with Abraham. Look what he did with everybody who was willing to believe him. Everybody who was willing to be persistent. When you become persuaded with something. When you allow God to breathe in you this faith, it reduces such a boldness and such a confidence. When the Word of God becomes something that you already have, not waiting to possess, it's yours. And now you're being trained and skilled in it, not by the waiting around for some other day, but being trained and skilled in it by the doing. See, you wax valiant in fight. You don't wax valiant in flight. You put the armies of the alien to flight. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> to, to engage, to, be fi to find yourself up against maybe even stubborn opposition, things, it's, it's like a fenced city. There's no way in. It seems like it's impossible. No matter how much you prophesy, no matter seemingly how much you proclaim, it just seems like there's, you know, it's just nothing happens. Don't let up. Don't stop. Don't shut up. Scream out all the more. Cry out all the louder. <laughs> this is why men ought to pray and not to faint. This is why we're supposed to continually, persistently ask. This is why we're supposed to ask, seek, and knock. To pursue, the, pursue passionately those things that we've asked for until we enter into the realm. That's asking, seeking, and knocking, and they together. To passionately pursue, that's seeking, those things that we ask for until we enter into the realm. That's what knocking is all about. And he's not going to stop knock, knocking until he, the, his friend gets up out of the bed. He's saying, first of all, to all the people in the house, shh, be quiet. Shh. 
They won't know that we're here. They'll think that we're sleeping and they'll go away. They will be honorable and, and courteous enough to go away. Just don't move. Shh. And there it goes. Ten minutes later. <laughs> hey, I know you're in there. I'm not going away. You're going to hear this all night. You better get up. If you want to get any sleep, you better get up. And get me something to eat. And, it's, and the guy in the house isn't going to get up because he's the neighbor and he's the friend. He's going to get up because of his boldness. Because of his persistence. Because of his confidence. I'm here. I'm, I don't care how you feel about me, what you think about me. It doesn't matter. I'm going to stay right here till I get what I need. Because my moment, my moment right now is more important than your attitude tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To have confidence towards God. To have boldness towards God. <laughs> well, sin is a terrible thing. It's an ugly thing. It steals your confidence. It's a place for Satan to work his demonic lies. Unbelief and doubt. It's an ugly demonic thing that steals your passion and your boldness to know that whatever you say, God will do. I pray in Jesus' name, you'll give yourself to perfect practice. Perfect practice is doing it exactly like God said to do it. Exactly like the coach said to do it. Don't modify. He said, well, you know, I'm a little more comfortable doing it this way. Well, it ain't going to work that way. You're going to miss. You're not going to be successful that way. Mm, 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 mm. So the Lord says to us, he gives, he, see, you know what the Lord's doing? He's constantly telling us about what we can do that is completely and totally impossible. True. Let me just say that again. <laughs> the Lord is, con let me turn this up. I mean, not something's wrong. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> The Lord is constantly asking us to do things that are absolutely, totally impossible. I'm getting ready to read, I'm getting ready to read, I'm ready to read, read one of them right here in just a minute. And we just look at it. We just stand there and stare at it. And the Lord just let us stand there and stare at it for a long time. How many years are you going to stand there and stare at it? <laughs> if you have other interests, if you have other things that bring you value, that bring you meaning, you might even just walk away from me. You might not even stare at it. I'm not going to do that. I, I'm going to go over here. I've got a lot of meaning. I'm going to go over here and these people that are going to, among these people that are going to praise me. God, one guy says, I only go where people celebrate me. <laughs> I'm like, you did what? You did what? <laughs> well, I don't have no place to go then, except for over, over with Anne. She celebrates me. <laughs> she throws a party for me every day. I'm telling you, decorations, it you know, all works. This is just it's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of the doctrines of the church are astounding. Here's what the Lord says. He says, arise. For everyone who's thirsty, he becomes rivers of the expression of the life of God. Now, the light that he's talking about is the life. The very life of God, the manifest presence. The power, the glory, the demeanor, the love, the peace. The sweetness, even in the midst of being persecuted, you're sweet. 
It's not just, oh, Lord, bless them, I pray. It's being sweet. It's being kind. It's, it's, being, it's treating people as though they've never done anything wrong. It's making everybody your friend. It's forgiving everybody, loving everybody, and blessing everybody. It's a burden-free life. Hallelujah. If you're talking bad about anyone for any reason, cease to do so. It's going to hold you back from moving forward. If you've got any bad attitudes about anything, let them go. It's going to keep you from following Jesus. Think about it. I, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light that is from the life of God, that is the light. The, here is the division. Walking in darkness is a realm of sin and iniquity. It's fellowship with demon spirits. It's fellowship with the world. It's an enjoyment of it, too. It's making provision, making room for it, finding justifications in the Bible why you can go out and carouse and hang out with demons and be right with God. If anybody ever even begins to suggest that to you, don't ever go around them ever again because they're deceived by a demon spirit. And the only possible way that they're going to be able themselves to be saved is to recognize that they've been deceived and come to get delivered. And that ultimately, that, th that literally is bordering lying on a threshold of apostasy they've been given over to a reprobate mind in the not too distant future. That's the way it works. Huh? The only, about only thing you can do when somebody begins to tell you that kind of stuff is just rebuke them and say, that is wrong, that is evil. Don't, not, don't no. You better repent quickly. The Lord loves us. He's got all the mercy and all the grace for us. He to be our perfecter, to be our provider, to be our protector, to establish in his way. He that began a good work in our lives shall complete it. But that kind of lies, that kind of attitude, that kind of compromise with the world is absolutely not the faith. It's not following Jesus. It's not walking the light. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, if we're going to walk in the light as he's in the light, then we're going to follow him. So he says, arise. Pastor Evangelist Kelly got up and arose. He rose up. He, he rose up here. He began to do things here. He came, into the, he came into the ministry and immediately began to serve the ministry in every way. He was ever, just ever so generous, ever so. It, does, it didn't matter. He'll do whatever. I'm here. I'm here to serve. And you also see something also about him all the time. It was a radical boldness and a confidence that wasn't being full of himself. It was being confident in the Lord. And people would look on it, would not maybe even understand it because a lot of people don't understand that kind of boldness and that kind of confidence because they've been indoctrinated in the culture of the world. And they won't give a place for that kind of boldness and that kind of confidence. Father gives place for that kind of boldness and that kind of confidence. In fact, he demands it. He wants us to have that kind of certainty. Say, he's a river of life. He's rivers of life to the thirsty. Say it. He's rivers of life to the thirsty. He is. He's the wellspring on the inside of me. He, you don't have to repeat this. You don't have to repeat this. He's the wellspring on the inside of me. Say, can you draw some water tonight? Some of you look, no, don't say it. Can you draw some water tonight? Do you know how to draw some water? Do you know how to draw some water from the well? Some of you desperately look like you need to draw some water from the well. You look parched. Almost at the point of exhaustion and death. It looks like, some of you look like you've been run by wolves. You ever seen a deer after it's been run by wolves? Or mountain lions? <laughs> Poor thing. Just trembling, looks like, you know, the, the, the look of terror on the face of the poor creature looks like it's Worse than death. Then draw some water. 
Throw some water. He's rivers of the life of God to the thirsty. Are you thirsty? Well, I just don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. It's just so terrible. I'm on my own. God went away. He took a vacation, said he'd be back in a couple of weeks. And, and I don't know how to get a hold of him. He didn't leave a telephone number. I don't have no way to text him, get a hold of him, nothing. I'm just, he's in you. He's in you. Draw some water. How do you draw water? How do you draw water? With joy. With joy. With joy. With joy shall you draw waters from the well of salvation. I say, I need a drink. If, huh? How can you get a drink with, how can you have a drink without water? So we say, well, he's, oh, praise God, that's beautiful, Pastor, all oh, amazing. He's uh, rivers of life to the thirsty. And we just want to write that down, huh? he's rivers of life to the thirsty. <laughs> Jesus, help us. Well, why would you have an opportunity to have rivers of life and just be just impressed by the way it just comes together and just sounds so beautiful and this is amazing. And not lay hold on that and say, wait a minute, you mean all I gotta be is thirsty? Well, if I'm thirsty and he's going to be rivers of, of water, of the life of God to the thirsty, I need a drink. Where do I get the water? Well, then draw, or draw the water. I need, if I'm gonna drink some water, I gotta have some, I gotta know where it is. Well, draw it, so draw some now. Let the bucket down. Go ahead and let the bucket out. <laughs> Let the bucket down here, splash. Now, now draw it up. Draw it up. Draw it up. Draw it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw the water from the pool. Somebody said, well, I just, you know, I didn't know how to be happy. Have a happy thought. What is a happy thought to you? You know what a happy thought to me is? My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. A very happy thought to me is I'm the darling of his heart. I am the jewel in his crown. It was for me that he died at Calvary because he did not want to live his eternity without me. He has set his love and affections upon me. He loves me more than Anne loves me. It's wonderful to have those kinds of expressions of love in our life. Satan tries to rip us off. He steals that with his ploy, with his, with his weapons, with his iniquity, his sin, his darkness. Get, you want to get mad, get mad at the devil. Everybody gets mad. They start cussing God. Why don't they cuss the devil? It's his fault. You cursed in the wrong person. I pray every one of you would have that much wisdom to help people around you when they say Jesus inappropriately. Say, no, 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 no. You curse in the wrong person. You use, it's Satan. You need to go, Satan. Say, you demon of hell. Put that in a movie. Hallelujah. Ha. Somebody said, what are you doing? I'm reacting to an interaction that I'm having with the Holy Ghost. It's always fun. 
If I just begin to think about him, if I just think about his goodness, I think about his love for me, I think about his faithfulness, I think about how it, without him, I'm, I'm lost eternally, I'm hopeless, I'm without any possibility of being ever able to interact with God because he's so holy, 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 he's so pure, 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 he's so good, he will not fellowship with anything outside of the realm of his glory. It's only because of Jesus. It's only because of Jesus. I can, draw, can you draw water from the well with that? <laughs> Hallelujah. I got right my mind. You can draw water from the well when you begin to think about the reality of the Holy Spirit that is with you. God the Holy Ghost is with you. He's not take, home taking a shower. Be back later. He's not left you on your own. He didn't say, I'm sick of it. I'm fed up. I'm tired. I'm going to a better environment. I'm going to go where I'm celebrated. <laughs> they ignore me. I'm sick of being ignored. I'm here with all of heaven's glory, and they're sitting there pouting and acting like I'm not even here. They're just, can you imagine the Holy Ghost standing over top of you, screaming to the top of his voice, but your ears are so deafened by the voices of this world. He's screaming top of his voice going, I'm here, Veronica! <laughs> but you can't hear him. It's, he's in a realm that's silent to you because he's in a realm of heaven and you've been drug over into a place of the world and the earth. And you're sitting there thinking you're all alone, yet God's screaming at the top of his lungs saying, I'll do anything you ask me to do. Let me take control. Ask me. Ask me. It is a wonderful thing when we discover that we can literally have a relationship with the Lord that we ask He answers. Yes. Do we say, strengthen me? Yeah. <laughs> we can say, Lord, I would like to be happy right now. I'm sad and uh, sorrowful or whatever, whatever. I'm mad, upset, whatever. How do you get mad and upset? How often do you get mad and upset? How long do you stay mad and upset? From this time on, we're going to give you only two minutes. So have fun with it. Get it out of your system. Set the clock, and it's done. Two minutes over. Then you say, Lord, I don't want to be mad anymore. I asked you to fill me with your love, your love and your peace. And then he does. And it becomes something that is an interaction. Now you're following Jesus. Now, in following him, you're willing to imitate him. You're willing to have a heavenly realm. You're willing to interact with the Father. You're willing to do the things that he's doing. You're willing to go where he's going, be who he is. He says, rise up. When? All the time. Anything that, you, anything that is opposing, opposing you, God says, rise up. Don't sit down. Rise up. Sickness, rise up. Disease, rise up. Temptation, rise up. Sin, rise up. Financial distress, rise up. Desperate for more of the anointing of God in your life, rise up. Want to move out in God, rise up. Just like Reinhard Bunke said, there's one thing God cannot do. He's created the whole of the universe. Everything's under his power, but there's one thing he cannot do. Get you off the couch. You have to rise up. But what happens when you rise up? Just like the thirsty person when they drink, Jesus will be the rivers of living water pouring out of them. In the same way, when we rise up, listen to me, I'm telling you, I want to make it practical for you. I want to be something that you can use tomorrow. I'm giving you some tools, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm, equip I'm equipping you with some dynamite. <laughs> I'm equipping you with some ability to blow things up. Hallelujah. Change things. Move mountains out of the way. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Vaporize opponents. Hallelujah. We want you to grab a hold of these things. Because if you rise up with the authority, with the boldness, with the confidence. What, listen, he gave, you don't have to sit around and try to talk yourself into it. Oh, as many as believed, he gave them the authority. Yeah. You know, you don't have to talk yourself into it. It's something that you become persuaded of. 
It's something that you've, it's yours. It belongs to you. This is who you are. You no longer live. It's Christ Jesus who lives. You've taken on the riches of his life. It doesn't matter how you measure yourself. It is irrelevant. He's given these things to you as a free gift because you're willing. You're willing. No, I don't care how messed up you are. I don't care how messed up you are. He'll straighten you up. I don't, you listen to me. I don't care how sad you are. Uh, he'll make you glad and happy. I don't care how depressed you are. You become the most gregarious person on the planet. I don't care how much of an intra fearful introvert you are. You're going to become the most outgoing person there is. I don't care how uncaring and insensitive you are. God's going to fill you with his compassion. All you got to do is walk with them. He's going to teach you. He's going to teach your emotions. He's going to teach your passions. He's going to teach your attitudes. He's going to teach your appetites. He's going to instruct you in all the ways of his own character and nature of his life. He's giving you his nature, his divine nature. He's giving you everything that pertains to his life and his godliness. He's of these rivers of the life of God Hallelujah. to the thirsty. To the thirsty. He is the light of the divine glory and power of God to those who rise up. I'm always telling people, don't sit down to it. Don't lay down to it. Don't back up. Don't pull it out of the closet and pet it. This is mine. What is that? This is my affliction. <laughs> I thought, I thought that thing looked monstrous. Get an axe and chop that thing up. Burn it. Get rid of it. Rise up with a divine power and authority. You're never going to see Jesus backing down one moment to any form of, of affliction, any form of sickness, any form of disease, any form of the works of darkness, any intimidating, threatening thing. He's in its face commanding it. Has to hear his voice. When you begin to believe that he's in you, and you're in him, all of a sudden, you're reacting to hit an interaction with him. Your reaction, your praise, your faith, your boldness is a reaction to something that God has done. Something that God is doing. He's right there speaking to you. You know who you are in him. It's not about you. It's about him. You're just being a servant, doing what your master has commanded you to do. And what he's commanded you to do is the miraculous things that only he can do. You're not even in the equation. And no matter who you are, no matter how long you, I'm telling you right now, I've seen people who've been walking with God a week do more than people who've been walking with God for 50 years. It don't matter how long you've been around. It's who you found. It's who you know <laughs> in heaven, not who you know on earth. No man can do anything unless he first receive it from heaven. But how low? God's poured out his Holy Ghost without limitation upon all flesh. Anybody who ever asks. Anybody whosoever wills. He's not waiting around on God. God's waiting around on us. It's not about, oh, God, bring the heavens and come down so that the mountains may melt before your presence. He's run the heavens. He's down. He's here. It's time that you and I allow his glory to be expressed through us yes. because we will obediently follow him in the decisions that we make. I was watching, a, I was watching this last week a veterinarian constantly making bad decisions. He was. He, he was confident that he knew what to do. And he was doing stuff wrong. And, and he was constantly getting scolded by this guy who invented this whole technology of non-surgical embryo transfer. And so the guy, and the guy just was, you know, he's a little testy. Ah! He was constantly getting barked at. Because he just didn't want to wait and get some instruction. Just slow down, man, get some instruction. Just wait just a second. 
And then finally I heard him say, man, I'm tired of making bad decisions. I'm just making one bad decision after another. How about you? Are you tired of making bad decisions? One after another, just bad rights, left and center. <laughs> just hold up. Watch God. Follow him. Move with him. Father is going to give you abundant life, joyful life, sweet life. You become a blessing to everybody around you. Amen. Not a burden, not a problem. Oh, no. Here we go again. <laughs> Boy, this is going to be a rough day. Having to put up with this. Well, I guess we all have a cross to carry. <laughs> that ain't the cross the Lord was talking about. Huh? <laughs> are right, you listening to me? Come on, God's people just need to go ahead and grab a hold of this. I'm tired of watching people repeat it again and again. Listen, I'm tired of watching children repeat the sins of their parents. The things that their parents have given into repeating in their, in their children. Somebody's going to have to put a pull-on plug on this. I can't crawl into your wheel because God can't crawl into your wheel. You've got to hear the word and decide you're going to change. And you're going to stop the stuff. I've heard one generation, you can't believe this woman I have to live with. I've heard it one generation after another, after another. You can't believe this man I have to live with. And they just repeat it. And then their kids have it in their life. You can see the same spirit of it. It's demonic. That ain't following Jesus. I don't care how much you pray. He loves you. He, 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 you important to him, but you're going to have to quit making poor decisions, bad decisions, wrong decisions, walking down the head of God. You have to learn how to follow him. You're going to learn, you have to learn how to give yourself over to his actions, to his love, to his goodness, to his peace, to his mercy. It's time to grow up a little bit. Yes. I've discovered that the spirit of the Lord will rush in where there's a little crack. Not even a wide open door. So all I'm asking you to do tonight is crack the door just a little bit. Just kind of crack the door enough to like peek out. And you come rush it in. The Lord says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. All you have to do is crack the door open, see who's knocking. <laughs> All you have to do, whatever situation you find yourself in, is rise up in his authority. The Lord commands it. He says, arise and shine, for your light has come. Jesus says, I am the light. We live in it. The prophet just prophesied. He didn't know what he was prophesying about, really. He sought earnestly to know, what is Isaiah? I can see my light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon me. You know, he can go, he can relate to this because he was there. In the holies of holies, he saw the Lord high and lifted up in his, in his glory, his train filling the temple. Huh? He saw the angels cry, holy, holy, holy. But he's going, now it's all of a sudden, it's becoming more personalized. He was touched by the coals from off the altar. But now the Lord's talking about something else. He's saying, rise up, shine. You start shining. Shining with what? It's literally to radiate the glory of God. It's the glory glow. It's the countenance that is on the face of the Father. He's telling you, you can have the same countenance of authority. You can have the same countenance of, a, of, of, of boldness, of power, of certainty. The right to call it as it's going to be. Instead of be constantly being the slave to mammon, the servant to men. God doesn't want us to be servants like that. He wants us to be servants to him and in serving him, serve one another. He don't want us to be servants to man, serving mammon, doing what man in a secular worldly place demands of us to do. Father's called us into an amazing realm of divine power and authority but we're going to have to be willing to step out we're going to have to be willing to do what it is that he's doing we're going to, have to be willing to rise up in it 
We're going to have to be willing to allow this faith to be activated. As he, he gives us this lofty thing. He says, to us, he says, your light has come. We know who that is. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. To us is given the ability to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. To us is given clarity, clarity, discernment, perception, understanding, revelation, wisdom. This is all that Jesus is to us, insight. People want to just make that, just make that flowery words and as though it's just something that's, you know, positional and has no living reality. It's a living reality. He is my wisdom right now. He's my perception, my insight, my ability to see right now. He's my righteousness right now. He's my sanctification, my consecration, my ability, in other words, to live in heaven. Listen, consecration is not about anything other than living in heaven. It's the ability to live the life of Jesus by the Holy Ghost. That's all heavenly. It's not some drudgery of life. It's not some terrible existence. It's an abundant life. You breaking your back when all you need to do is just have faith and shout it out. Y'all heavy laden and laboring, burdening, worried and cast down, beaten down, caring about yourself. When all the time you could have been soaring upon the wings of glory. You could have been daily increasing. I'm, I'm giving myself the daily increase to go from glory to glory. I've given myself to daily have an ever increasing manifestation of his, of his, of his presence and, and person in my life. You could do it too. Come follow me. Yes. Come follow me. Come do what I do. Yes. I don't have to wake up in the morning and say, oh, God, this woman you gave me. First of all, <laughs> I have to live with this woman. First of all, my dad didn't do that. My grandfather didn't do that. Praise God, I have to inherit that thing in my family. Huh? Be cursed with the demons that your parents gave place to, and you don't know how to resist them. You listen to me. You listen to me now. So I don't have to speak like this at no profit. People don't want to recognize the devils they've allowed into their house. The demon spirits they've allowed into their thinking, into their mind. All you got to do is rise up and say, no more am I participating with these demon spirits, these lies against the truth. Justify my state. Justify my sickness. Justify my sin. Justify my attitude. Listen, there is no justification of it. It's darkness. Jesus said, I'm the light of this world. I'm the light of the world. What does that look like? That's the manifest presence of Almighty God, the Father. That's everything that is the beauty and the splendor of what it's like to live in the realm called heaven. A place where there's unending, ceaseless life. Huh? A place where there is no sickness, where there is no disease, where there is no poverty. There is no decay. You know, I was just, I was look, I was dealing with these blastocysts, which are matured embryos. They're mature to a point where you can transplant them. And I'm looking at them, you know, and I'm dealing with the fact I can take this thing and I can put it in a suspended animation. For an indefinite period of time, I can thaw it out, put it into the uterus of a, of a recipient cow and immediately springs to life. I'm just like, this is so amazing how you can just suspend this creative thing. And it's really, you shut down disease. You shut down decay. You shut down everything that destroys. When you freeze it down to 197, minus 197C, pretty cold down there yeah. everything just kind of shuts down worse than that's one kelvin 273 it's hard to get there though everything shuts down i'm thinking wow heaven i live in a place where everything of disease and sin and sickness is shut down it has no right to exist that's what god has said 
That's what Jesus has taught us. That's what he showed us to walk. He says, come walk over here. Father showed him in the Old Testament, do these things, and these diseases will not come upon you. These sicknesses won't come upon you. He showed, come over here. I showed you how to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. There's nobody that's ever come to me and, and pulled on me in the realms of the anointing who is afflicted and tormented in their mind who's been willing to obey the instructions that the Lord said to spoken through my mouth. They didn't get delivered. They get delivered every time. Right. One time the Lord told me to tell this person this crazy thing to do. I'm like selling them just go do this. It was kind of wild to come out of my mouth. I was only been pastoring for two years. And I told them, good, let's go and do this. And they went and did it. And a, a, a lifetime disease was cured. Just real simple. I just said, well, I'm so, so bold. And I'm not going to be less than that. So confident. There were some areas, I think, some, some places I was even more bold and more confident, less had anything to do with me then, maybe even the now. Sometimes we can grow and love him more, but not trust him as much. because we know more or whatever. I remember time after time, people would come to me, they were on medication, completely mentally whacked out. This is one young man, some of you know who he was, he's 16 years old, he came into the meeting, completely mentally whacked out on all kinds of medication. And if he didn't take his medication, he went into such in intense depression that he always trying to kill himself, suicidal. I looked at him and I got radical and said, don't you ever take another if you don't you ever take another pill again. And I kind of scared him a little bit in that way that I talked to him. And I said, and I just demanded it of him in Jesus name. You better listen to me. And he didn't take his medication and his parents come to visit me and his dad was going to beat me up. His dad was a big guy. He's going to thrash me. And I sat down and I talked with them. And they said, well, you know, we, we just came here to find out why you're messing with their son. I said, well, did you take him to the doctor to get him examined? And they said, no. I said, well, how is he doing? He said, well, he seems to be okay. I said, well, why don't you take him to the doctor and you'll find out that what I told him is true. Just do that and then they come back think about tra trashing me. I have to do that. You may thrash me after <laughs> you evaluate. They, when they evaluated him, he was completely healed. He was completely healed until the day he started cursing me. And then all the sickness and disease came back upon him. Why? Because his healing was tied to the realms of the anointing in which he came into the kingdom. People want to buck up against the ways of God. They want to try to have a relationship with God without men. If you walk in the light as he's in the light, then you have fellowship one with another. And God talking about a fellowship of oneness. The bother don't count fellowship of just being kind of like friends. You know? Well, I, I agree with most of what you say. Well, that's nothing to do with you agreeing with most of what I have to say, half of what I have to ask. Whether or not you agree with God, whether or not you agree with love, whether or not you agree with servitude, whether or not you agree with the right attitude, because Father wants to bring us over into a realm of interacting with Him, walking in the light as He's in the light. <laughs> How did I mean that? Responding to things as he responds to them. Being that which, he, I mean, walking in, a, in such a humility, but at the same time, such a boldness. Such a meekness, but such great confidence. There's no models for that in the world. You have to take a drink to you understand that. You have to have another drink. Go ahead, take another drink. I'm going to take a drink. Just because I'm so thirsty. You know, I had no idea I preached for three hours this morning. And I don't feel sorry about it at all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Katokina makekst paklina paha. Because you're the better for it. Amen. I'm the better for it. Ha Ramon Sadeini Ishi. Ibrebata si finala pokatai. Lesi bruna sabrebehitesh.
Lan de breze che di Berenaia, su tarosi vichiste. Lucane si paronaia la pacheia. Zevri mang lei profetina. Bexti caramecchia. Hallelujah. Daniel, why don't you and... Kelly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus says, here's my life. Go ahead and live it. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Yes. Jesus said, here's my life. Go ahead and live it. Jesus said, here's my life. Go ahead and live it. <laughs> Jesus says, here's my life. Go ahead and live it. And we just timidly kind of just, well, what, 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 what do you mean? We spend that about 10 years on what he mean. <laughs> so the Lord says, here's my life. Go ahead and live it. Tonight, I just want you to hear that, and I want you to do it. Here's, I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I was coming in to minister another message tonight. I walked in the place. I began to just walk around just a little bit, and immediately the Lord said, I want you to tell them to have confidence in what I've declared. I want you to tell them have boldness, move in confidence, move in boldness. Have no confidence in their human ability. As long as you have confidence in your human ability. I mean, to the point where you could just fell at everything and still feel good about yourself. Because it don't matter. It's not where your value system is, not who you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you in Christ and he's in you and you're living for him. Hallelujah. Praise God. My name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. I'm ruling and reigning with Jesus. For, I don't have, and there's nothing in this world. I can't do nothing. <laughs> I cannot do anything without him. I cannot speak, said Moses. I'll be your mouth. You will? He's still not certain. And my Lord says, Come, give me a break, Moses. Look at Moses arguing with the Lord. But I tell you, I can't speak. And the Lord says, what, Moses, I formed your mouth. I formed the mouth. I invented mouth. <laughs> I'm certain that you can do this. And he's still like, I'm not, I don't think so. And so God gives him Aaron until he gains confidence. Father is amazing. <laughs> I mean, when you're willing to in, be engaged and take a hold of that which he's ordained you to do, Moses was stirred by it. He knew early on in his life that somehow God was going to use him. He went about it the wrong way. That didn't stop father. Just because he went around about, about it the right, wrong way, it didn't stop father. He just, all he did was get himself in trouble a little bit. Huh? And then ended up in a place of just feeling that being that much more of a failure. Huh? He went, he went from, you know, being a place of leading men to leading sheep. Think about it. How many of you, how many of you really deal with failure really well? <laughs> That's all really all about you. That's where you get to identify yourself. It's painful, I know. You just need to laugh at yourself. 
You need to begin to become more convinced because you're set up now to really be used by God because those people are constantly succeeding. They can just do anything and then they got it all put together. They're never going to even make, probably never come into this crisis. There's people who can't do anything. I had this, I had this one guy say to me, this is Mark, he says, he says, I can never be, I can never preach like you. I said, it's a good thing you don't have to, isn't it? He said, I can never know the Bible. I can never catch up. He said, I just don't really know much of anything. I mean, the only thing I know about is dirt. And I know a few things about this other stuff. I know how to hunt good. But because he had no confidence in himself, God was able to take him into a place of confidence in him and begin to soar above other men. Because it's easier for him to recognize I can do nothing of myself. I don't understand how to do this. I can't do this. I don't have the ability to do it. I'm in one situation where he's just like one that stood in the background and said, no, get up here. You're doing it. Get up. There was 15,000 people standing out there. I said, no, you get up. God's ordained you to miracle signs and wonders called you to do this. And just go do it. And he's trying to tell me what he's going to do and trying to run it by me and think so what, for my value. I said, listen, it doesn't matter, man. Whatever you do, whatever God says, just fine. I'm not going to critique nothing. <laughs> just do it, man. Just whatever Papa's putting in your mouth, just speak it. Well, I can't sleep at night. So, man, I said to him, listen, you're going to die before Father's ever able to fully develop you <laughs> in the things of the anointing because you can't live your life not sleeping. And the Lord's going to look at you. He's going to see you. Every time he goes to use you, he's going to recognize you can to get no sleep. So he's going to have to say, well, I can only use him ever so often. Otherwise, he's going to die of sleep deprivation. <laughs> you limiting God. Well, why can't God use you? What is it that if he uses you, you're going to die? It was really easy for me to diagnose it with him. So you don't have to just learn how to let it go. Why? Because he had no confidence in himself. I said, that's good. No confidence. No confidence. I got no confidence in himself when it comes to standing in the place of God. He had confidence about everything else he did, and he knew what to do. And the things he knew what to do, his bold and confident things he knew how to do. But representing God, I can't, how can man represent God? What is a man? Who's a man that he might represent God? I can't do that. What do you mean? Yes, you can. That's his anointing upon you. His miracle anointing upon you. I mean, the first day the Lord spoke to me about 25 years in this particular person, about 25 years ago. And I come up, called him up on the telephone. And I said, I have the word of the Lord for you. He said, what? I said, the Lord has put his anointing upon you. Great signs and wonders and miracles should be manifested through your life. And the person that was in the office his secretary began to sob and to weep. I said, weep. She didn't even hear it. Power of God. Just the power of God. The announcements of the Lord. So I said, oh, yours? Oh, wow. Mine. No, I'm just bold. I've got confidence. I've taken a position in God that he gave me. I didn't deserve one mitt. Mit. Bit of it. I can do nothing without him. If there's anything that allowed me to step into anything I have in God is recognize I can do nothing of myself. For me, I'm going to tell you right now, without the anointing, I am the most boring person to listen to. Without the anointing, I can't put I don't. Without the anointing, I am blah. And I'm just like, Lord, I'm blah. I don't even like, I don't even really like to do a bunch of talking. You said, come around my house. People get kind of a little bit confused about it. We just all sit around silent. <laughs> we ride down the road for hours and don't say a word. People are like riding with us going, does anybody talk? <laughs> no, we just enjoy being quiet. It's just the way we are, you know. <laughs> it's like Eliphaz. Shall I fill my belly with the east wind? 
You know what I'm saying? Bunch of hot air. East wind, hot air. <laughs> I love reading Job. I'm telling you, I've really gotten into the book of Job just because I've become so fascinated with the value of the good doctrine that is there, the insights that every one of them had. It's amazing. But at any rate, this is another thing. Paul just wants you to be confident. He's wrote these things for you to you to be confident. I've, I've alluded to it so many times tonight. I just want you to look at it. 1 John 3, 21. If any of you would like to give yourself to memorizing Scripture, let me just encourage you. Go ahead and memorize the first epistle of John. It won't take you long to memorize it. You go, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. If you ask the Holy Ghost, he'll give you the ability to do it. It won't take you long. Those of you who have to commute to work, when I was working full time, I set my heart on letting God prepare me. I had some of the great, greatest sermons I've ever preached driving down the road and commuting to work. It was powerful. It was, I mean, it, it was, I'm telling you, it was so anointed. It was, it was just something that it was right from heaven. I would get these sermons. I mean, I gave myself, and I would, you know what, just take a couple of verses of the scripture, okay? Just imagine, you go into work five days, right? You commute there, and you commute back, and let, for me, I had a little, out, about an hour commute, right? And you take three to five verses a day, right? And you memorize them. You got an hour to memorize, two hours to memorize. And you just keep repeating it. It's just on a little piece of paper. It's no problem. You're sitting in traffic anyways, right? This is not, this is before texting. And you can hold it up and look at it so nobody's going to get hurt. And you're not supposed to be looking at it most of the time anyways. Just imagine it won't take you long. If there's any epistle in the Bible that you would want to memorize first, memorize it first, John. It would change your life. It changed my life. It opened my eyes, my understanding, the things of God. That before I did not know. The Lord says in verse 20, Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, then we have confidence towards God. And whatever we say, whatever we ask. Now, if you notice, the Lord's been talking to us about, about along these lines for about four weeks now. Whatever you say, whatever you ask, Father would do it. So I started asking, Lord, Please, I want a greater manifest presence. I want, to, I want to be able to interact with you in a more intimate way. And it starts happening. It's been happening. Like I was expressing to you this morning, the encounter I had with the Lord this past week. For me, it's all within the context of what we're talking about here. We've been talking about here for four weeks. I'm just talking to you right out of the realms of the saints that the Holy Spirit's making real to me. Look, go to asking. Don't ask a mist that you may consume it in your own lust. Don't ask them for things that you who are this. It's not time. You know, like I said, I think the last time I said it, it's not time to look at the bay liner and say, you know, I need a new bay liner because we want to go out salmon fishing. Lord, if you love me, I know you know you want to bless me and everything. So I want 32-foot bay liner. Thank you. With two twin, you know, motors on the back. I want the thing to go 34, you know, 30, 30, 30 to 40 knots. And I want the new fish to find her and, uh, on it. And I'd like to have this. And I'd like to do Forget about it. Don't ask a miss. Ask for something real. Ask for the things that last forever. Don't ask for the things that perish with the using. So, Lord, I want to glorify your name. Now, be specific. Somebody said, well, I said, well, what are you going to do with your life? Well, I just want to live my life for Jesus. What do you mean you want to live your life for Jesus? How? Give me some specifics. Well, I don't know. I'm open for anything. No, I want to hear you. I want to hear whether or not you got a heavenly vision or not, whether or not you're about to do something. Are you just going to sit around being available? 
people sit around available are preoccupied with their own interest. We want God, God wants you to increase. He wants you to walk into Cambodia and change it all. Walk into Cambodia. I know China, beautiful Chinese girls. Amazing women of God. Amazing women of God. And uh, they gave their life to go and reach Cambodia. And they came from pretty affluent families. And they're very bright girls. I mean, they could have done anything. They could have been, they could have been medical doctors. They could have done anything. Very bright girls. And instead, they chose the anointing. They chose the power and the glory of God. Can you imagine that? Somebody give up medical school for heaven. Somebody give up a great career for heaven. Can you imagine that? I wonder what's wrong with them. And so they've gone into Cambodia, they're in Cambodia. They've been in Cambodia now for a number of years. When did I go, when did I go with Brother Yun to KL? Like six years ago, six or seven years ago. Brother Yun will be here end of this month. What is it, next week? 22nd. The 22nd. We're going to have a good time with them if I can slow down all the people that are around them. Because Brother Young wants to just hang out and praise God and pray. I mean, you get Brother Young, just get him cut free from all the people that are in a hurry, go do this thing, that thing, the other thing. He'll sit around and have a meeting for 10 hours, and it'll be good. We'll enjoy every minute of it. We'll be praying every five minutes while I'll be kneeling down. <laughs> That's just the way he does things. It's fine with me. He used to send for me every morning at 5 o'clock. Where's, where's Mark? Where's Pastor Mark? He's still sleeping. And he, he came to me and said, you have to be at prayer. I said, would you move it up to 7? <laughs> no, we must pray at 5. I said, I sleep at 5. <laughs> because I fell asleep at 3. It's usually the way it is. <laughs> I got sleep from three to seven. Three to five, I can't live off of that. But at any rate, these girls just telling us how they went in there, they had to, you know, they went, they went into abject poverty in the, it, back in the jungles of Cambodia. We're talking about where nobody, and then they go into the lucrative cities, they went into the unreached peoples in the backwoods of Cambodia. And they said, well, it was so hard to get used to the customs and the way that they bathe and, you know, just all these customs and just the power and the anointing and the presence of the Lord upon their life. Amazing. An anointing to reach a whole nation. I'm, I'm expecting to start hearing about these great Revival after revival, just like we heard about, like a mighty wind from Indonesia. I'm in expectation to hear one great move of God after another great move of God because we're in that period. I'm talking about in the unseen, unheard places of Cambodia, of Vietnam, of Tibet, of North Korea, of Kashmir, of Afghanistan, of Syria, an explosion among the northern Kurds. I'm telling you, man. But there's not going to be unless there's going to be a people that are full of the Holy Ghost and full of faith who are going to move in the miraculous anointing. And praise God that there's a whole army in China that's been raised up to do that. I want you to be raised up to do it. And, 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 and I want you to join with me in raising up others to do it also. You can't join with me in raising up others to do it if you're not going to do it with me. You can't say, Pastor, we're here to support you. And you're not doing this. There's got to be an explosion of passion and power of God. I mean, I appreciate your sweet heart to want to stay here and support and just lift up our hands, you know. And anoint. But you're going to have to get touched by the power of God, too. And we begin to move in these things of faith and signs and wonders in a greater way. Man, I feel like passing a jug around today. 
I really did. You know, I just looked at some of you and said, I'm not drinking after them. No, I, did, I didn't. I didn't say that. Because I would have got to drink it first. No. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> no, I don't do that because I just want us to do it together. That's why we ask you to hold on to the bread. I mean, some people come and they, they, they knew and they're like, they're already eating on the bread. It's like, you know, they've already eaten it and we're not even getting ready to start yet. And because they just didn't really understand it. So they, how do we learn how to do things together? Can we believe together? Can we move together? Can we be happy together? Can we be healed together? Can we live the life of the overcomer together? Can we go to heaven together? Can we advance the kingdom of God together? Can we see signs and wonders together? Can you hook up together with us in our faith? Because we're hooked up together with God and his faith. We're not only, we're not just hooked up with ourselves, you, you know, you, you and me and us few or whatever. You know, we hooked up with the, with the great alliance of the kingdom of God holding hands. I mean, if you could see how big the circle of hands that was holding, we're holding right now of the people of God. And I mean, just, be, I mean, I just love that. So he says, you're bragging. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's the way God, that's the way God wants it. And if you can't say that, you know, you're, you, need, you need to get it fi that fixed. And if I couldn't say I was holding hands with the company of God's saints, I'd get that fixed real quick. Huh? If I just believed that it, we're uh, just us, we're it. <laughs> That'd be pathetic. You with me? That this is all God can do. <laughs> Father is much, much bigger. And much, much bigger. Than me and you, much much bigger. You know, sometimes people get in this, you know, the you know the microcosm of you know of what we're doing. Man, there's so much. God's doing so much in the earth. He's given us a role to play, a part to play. As a people, He's given you individually a role to play, a part to play, and you. This gets to be a springboard for your life. It gets to be a place uh, that you get to be, you get to just move forward and launch out into the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to hang on to anyone except for Ann. I'm going to say that again. Some of you are looking at me like, that was, you're supposed to, amen, or laugh or something. <laughs> May you hear me? Testing one, two, three. <laughs> I want everybody. I'm not, I wasn't. That wasn't a you know a disliking you comment. <laughs> that was like we want to see you released and go in the power. And there was an empowering you comment. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Jesus. We love you so much. Tikana Mosipe. Hallelujah. Horosane. Siko Ramame Erebeasi. Ibrahamambala Batakeyala. Listen, we're just so happy to see you here tonight. This changed your life. This has established you in the good things of God. She caprant us up there. Hallelujah. Frana dea say. Avrana. Main daiki shin deita. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ho raman dea. Take them brusefiti. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Daniel, Kelly, come help me pass this. Pass. Pass. Who? She Ramaya. She Karamona. Yes, pass it out.
Oh, um, uh, Chris came to me and said a bunch of us guys made some... <laughs> Bunch of us guys made a bunch of tortillas. <laughs> Last night, should we bring those for communion? <laughs> I said, man, we don't want to eat a bunch of tortillas that guys made. He said, are they really good? I said, well, you had to bring in a sample first. <laughs> We want the best here. Not to say you're not a good cook or anything. Just it's got to be proven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha. 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 Ha.